What type of doctors make the least money? Let's get into it. While I think it's safe to say that nearly all doctors make pretty good money, some doctors make money that is, shall we say, less good than others. Let's jump right in. According to the 2023 Medscape Physician Compensation Report, the lowest earning doctors are those in public health and preventative medicine. They have a reported average annual compensation of $249,000. Now I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, that's a quarter of a million a year, that ain't bad. Well, compared to high earning doctors like plastic surgeons, where the average compensation is reported at $619,000, the salary of preventative health docs is considerably lower. But why is this? I think first and foremost, public health and preventative medicine doctors commit the cardinal sin when it comes to making money in healthcare, and that is not doing procedures. If you look at all the highest paid doctors, plastic surgeons, orthopedists, cardiologists, what do they all have in common? They do procedures. Plastic surgeons do reconstructive surgery, orthopedists do hip and knee replacements, cardiologists do cardiac catheterizations. These are all very procedure focused specialties. In American healthcare, we reimburse procedural specialties like these handsomely, much more so than doctors who only work with their brains, not their hands. Secondly, many preventative medicine docs work mainly during business hours. Let's face it, nobody's going in for a diabetes checkup at 2 a.m. on Christmas day. For this reason, these docs miss out on the higher pay differential typically awarded to doctors who work after hours or on holidays. Finally, a lot of public health and preventative med docs do non-clinical work as well, working behind the scenes in such fields as epidemiology and public policy, trying to understand the interplay between disease and society as a whole. This sort of non-clinical work would be compensated differently than work done actually seeing patients. So that's it for the lowest paid specialty of public health and preventative medicine. Now, no discussion of low paid doctors would be complete without mention of pediatrics. This specialty is the second lowest paid with an annual compensation of 251,000. I gotta tell you, I have no clue why this is the case, but generation after generation of doctors, the lowest paid or among the lowest paid are always pediatricians who focus on caring for children. So why is it? Is it because maybe the diseases are less complicated? Uh, for example, if you see an adult who's 70 years old, that person has been accumulating diseases for decades, things like high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, cancer. Sometimes their medication lists are 20 medications long. In contrast to this, let's look at a child who's eight years old. How complicated can this possibly be? Well, turns out very complicated. A child with a hematologic malignancy might have had several rounds of chemotherapy and multiple complications from this. Or let's say a child who was born with congenital heart defects who might have undergone several cardiac surgeries. This individual might have anatomy and physiology that's totally different from that which we learn in medical school. So why is it then that pediatricians are among the lowest compensated doctors? Is it because we value the life of kids less than we value the life of adults? I, I don't think that's the case. I hope that's not the case, but honestly, I can't tell you why pediatricians are always on the lower end of the physician compensation scale. Moving on, let's touch on the third lowest paid medical specialty. This is family practice with an average annual compensation of $255,000. Now here's the deal. Family practice and my specialty, internal medicine, are both on the lower end, but at least this year, uh, family practice was a little bit lower compensated than internal medicine. And uh, this might be hard to understand why, because we're both primary care specialties. Uh, we both undergo the same amount of training, three years of residency training. But I think one difference is that in family practice, um, and generally speaking, the training involves more time in clinics. So people who have completed a family practice residency will feel more comfortable uh, in clinic than those who do internal medicine training. And as such, family practice doctors may be more inclined to focus much of their care in clinic as opposed to the hospital setting. And what does this mean? This means fewer overnight shifts, fewer shifts on weekends and holidays that would usually be compensated at a higher rate. So I think this could be one of the reasons for the lower pay. Finally, let's get into the fourth lowest paid medical specialty, and that is infectious disease with an annual compensation of $262,000. 
Now, I can't for the life of me explain this one because infectious disease specialists are like super specialists. They're the doctors that doctors turn to when they need help. These men and women have done a lot of training as well. They've done three years of internal medicine training plus an additional two years of fellowship. So they're very highly trained yet are not necessarily highly compensated. So let's try to figure this out. Let's look at what an infectious disease doctor does. So it's very cerebral work because any doctor can treat an infection. You just prescribe antibiotics. You can treat a pneumonia, urinary tract infection, infection of the skin. But sometimes infections can be very complicated. They can involve very unusual organisms or bacteria or bacteria that are resistant to a lot of the antibiotics that we commonly use. Or you can end up with complications of infections. If the infection gets in the bloodstream, it can spread to the heart. You can then shoot septic emboli into the brain. Things can get complicated very quickly. And this is where you need an infectious disease specialist to help guide you for how to diagnose what's going on and how to custom tailor the best treatment plan for a given situation. So ultimately, it's very high level detective work that infectious disease doctors do. But here's the thing, it falls under that cardinal sin of being, for the most part, non-procedural. Infectious disease doctors work with their brains, not often with their hands. I mean, they do some procedures. Some of them will do lumbar punctures and other bedside procedures, but most are not scrubbing into the OR. So because you're doing the cardinal sin, you're not doing procedures, you're working with your brain, not your hands, infectious disease doctors find themselves on the lower end of the compensation scale. So that's it, but I do wanna say that I don't think doctors go into this profession for the money, and that's why even all these different specialties that you see on the lower end of the compensation scale are still quite popular because we don't go into this profession to try to get rich. We go into it because we like the challenge, we like working with patients, we wanna feel like our work makes a difference, we want to make people's lives better. We don't necessarily just want to pad our paychecks. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like medical or medical adjacent content like this, feel free to hit the subscribe button there or check out another video here. And I'll see you guys next time.